one of the hardest hitters in NFL history. An all-pro ball hawk with Hall of Fame credentials. However, a man who was once considered one of the most feared and prolific players in the league would become the subject of one of the darkest storylines in football history. Former NFL star, a Super Bowl champion, Darren Sharper. The details on an NFL star accused of serial One of the first lines labels the former NFL star as a suspect. It's growing by the minute. Police are calling former NFL star Darren Sharper a serial fist. Victims are coming forward. He's also accused of f***ing two women in California, and detectives are building more cases against him in Nevada and Louisiana. Darren Sharper was one of the best players of the past decade in the NFL. Now he's in jail for numerous sexual assault charges. A real-life Jekyll and Hyde, who at one point supported women's causes, but later went on to attack women all over the country. The women named Sharper. Accused of being a serial rapist, cases involving nine women across four states. Suffering a staggering fall from grace. How do you plead to the charge? A little bit, he's pumped up. And a 50-yard interception return for a touchdown against Detroit. 34-yard fumble return touchdown against Dallas. Gridiron great, suffering a staggering fall from grace. Sharper's story would begin in Henrico County, Virginia. Sharper was an exemplary student. An honor roll student who had perfect attendance three of his four years at Hermitage High and was part of the class council. However, Sharper's accomplishments off the field would pale in comparison to his feats on the gridiron. Sharper would attend William and Mary College and would quickly make a name for himself as one of the premier safeties in all of college football. His ball hawk prowess, combined with his big hit ability, made him the ideal safety for NFL teams. And Sharper's hard work would pay off. Welcome to the National Football League's 62nd Annual College Draft. Sharper would fail to start his rookie year, but would make his presence immediately known. With zero starts, Sharper would score three defensive touchdowns. And throughout his 14-year career, Sharper would solidify his standing as one of the best defenders in the league making it to five Pro Bowls, a two-time All-Pro, named to the NFL 2000's All-Decade team, a Super Bowl champion with 63 regular season interceptions, ranking sixth all-time, 11 of them returned for touchdowns, ranking second all-time, and his 13 total defensive touchdowns are tied for first alongside Rod Woodson and Charles Woodson. Sharper's final game in the NFL would take place in Seattle. And after 14 years, his illustrious Hall of Fame caliber career would come to an end. One dark night in Miami, at the renowned nightclub mansion, two female college students attended, eager to experience the nightlife they had heard so much about. As the night progressed, they met the club promoter, Wesker Piano, and after a night of dancing and drinking, Piano suggested they accompany him to visit a friend, Darren Sharper. The women met Sharper and entered his $6.7 million apartment. But exhausted from a night of partying, both women quickly fell asleep. 
During the night, a man entered the room with sinister intentions. Being disturbed several times through the course of the night, the women had had enough and awoke Piano and told him about the disturbing things that had happened to them as they slept and were taken to the hospital the following morning. Officer Alejandro Fernandez had received a call and was dispatched to Jackson Memorial Hospital. Upon arriving, he encountered two women, recounting to the officer what they had experienced last night. The women were clearly shocked and frightened by the incident, and shortly before leaving Sharper's apartment, they had noticed that an article of clothing was missing on both of the women. However, after an inspection, Dr. Victoria Faya informed police that she did not find any evidence of sexual battery on either complainant. Just five days later, police would classify the case as miscellaneous and non-criminal and would later destroy the rape kits. When asked to identify who the man was that entered their room that night, she stated, It was Darren or Jamie Sharper. On the night of February 1st, 2013, at a Super Bowl party in New Orleans, a woman modeling for the event met a man named Brandon Licardi. The two seemingly hit it off. Licardi decided to buy the young woman a drink, but shortly thereafter, the woman became woozy and Licardi decided to take her to the home of a close friend, Darren Sharper. Her drink, unbeknownst to her, had been spiked with a slew of drugs and sedatives, ecstasy, Xanax, and Valium. After Licardi drugged victim one, he brought V1 to the defendant's condo in the warehouse district of New Orleans with the intent to have with her and to provide the defendant with the opportunity to have with her. Sharper ultimately chose not to. Upon waking, she woke up in a state of panic, grabbing her clothes and ran out of the condo. When she reached the street, she called a friend who came and got her. She told him that she did not know what happened, but that she may have been drugged. Cell site information was obtained in this matter by the FBI, pursuant to a court order. It showed that on the night slash morning that V1 was f the cell phones of Licardi and Sharper were both at the location of the party at 2.30 a.m. and were together in the warehouse district where Sharper's condo was located between 3.15 a.m. and 5.48 a.m. on February 2nd, 2013. A woman stumbled through the crowded club in a daze. A witness who saw the woman describes the incident. Tony Stafford witnessed the woman, a former Saints cheerleader, stumbling around the club in a stupor and stated, looked like she was sleepwalking. He became concerned and out of the corner of his eye, he saw Sharper eyeing the woman. Stafford approached Sharper and asked about the woman and Sharper responded that he was taking her back to his apartment, which is about a mile away. She's on the potion. She's ready. Sharper then took the woman's hand and walked out of the club. The next morning, Stafford received a call. The woman he had seen the night before was on the phone, weeping as she told Stafford that she had awoken to find Sharper on top of her. Stafford then convinced her to go to the hospital for an examination, and she agreed. An investigation soon began into the alleged incident. Police obtained a DNA sample from Sharper. Six weeks later, Sharper's DNA matched the DNA found on the woman. really would not mean much to me. Uh, a guy like that, I know his true colors now. Uh, a guy I cannot trust. Two women were on the way to an after party with Darren Sharper. 
Along the way, Sharper stated that he needed to stop by his hotel and grab something and invited the women up to his room. Sharper made the women a drink, but just minutes after consuming, the women would black out. Eight days later, a mother and daughter walked into the North Hollywood police station to report the incident. The daughter stated that after blacking out, she awoke nude in bed with Sharper. The young woman struggled to get to her feet. She lost control of her motor functions and felt increasingly lightheaded and dizzy. She unsteadily made her way to the bathroom. They had made their way home from a nightclub with Sharper after her friend had become ill. She had felt fine the whole night until the last drink Sharper had made for them, which she called frat shots. And as she made her way to the bathroom, she caught something out of the corner of her eye. She saw Sharper on top of the passed out friend. Shocked, she ran back to the room and locked the door. Sharper stood at the door. He tried to explain what the woman saw and that he and the passed out woman had a relationship. By noon the next day, Sharper had fled after being confronted by the women and stating that he didn't remember what happened the night before. All three of the women present went to the hospital to be examined, one of which showed evidence of assault. The police searched the apartment. They collected drink bottles, used plastic cups from a trash can, a rug, couch cushions, and clothing. One of the discarded cups still held remnants of a drink that Sharper had mixed. Officers also found a broken pink pill. The examiner's diagnosis was as follows. Sexual assault by history, minor physical injury by exam, crime lab results pending. A rehearsed phone call would be placed by one of the victims to Sharper in an attempt to gather a form of admittance to the crime. Darren quickly stated his phone battery was running out and he had to call her back. He hung up and called back at 1849 hours from a blocked number stated she was still very upset about the situation. Darren stated he was sorry and still wanted to be friends with <laughs> stated that she realized that Darren had a problem and that he had probably done something like this before. Darren replied that was ridiculous. <laughs> continued to question Darren about the incident. He replied the situation was <laughs> up, but he refused to provide any more details or talk about the incident. Darren stated that he and <laughs> needed to find a way to move on and continue to be friends. He did not want to talk about the past any longer and wanted to focus on their friendship moving forward. Darren stated that he would let her know about coming to Arizona, but reiterated that he still wanted to remain friends with her. Darren told her that he would talk soon before ending the call. Hey, this is Darren Sharper and it's time for the football camp for her. Join Lance Moore and myself as we enjoy a ladies night out with a purpose. We were in full police uniform, driving a marked black and white police vehicle. We received a radio call for a sexual assault investigation at the Santa Monica Treatment Center. We met with the two victims as they told their story. While at the nightclub, was approached by mail, later identified as Sharper, Darren Sharper and began to talk and it was later determined that they both were going to the same party after the nightclub. Sharper invited and to another party, but he stated he had to go to his hotel and pick something up before. Sharper invited and to his hotel room and agreed to go inside and went straight into the bathroom. When they got inside his hotel room, Sharper had two vodka and cranberry shots ready for and when they exited the bathroom. They initially declined the shots, but Sharper kept asking them to take the shots, and they took the shots. Blank and Blank blacked out within 10 minutes. Blank and Blank woke up at approximately 0900 hours, believed that Sharper possibly placed drugs in the vodka shots. Blank and Blank decided to get tested because they believed they had been sexually assaulted, went to the Santa Monica Rape Treatment Center at midnight. Just one day later, Sharper, would strike again. <laughs> 
Two women had been invited to a VIP table at Surrender Nightclub. At this table, they met Darren Sharper. The night felt like a blur, and soon they were on their way to an after party with Sharper. Both women noted feeling funny and can only remember pieces of what transpired. One of the women woke up in a bed with Sharper and got up, still foggy and disoriented, and went to go look in the mirror and saw a cut on her face and noticed there was blood on the bed sheets as well. When both women left, they were both convinced that they were drugged and and went to be examined. Both were unsure whether or not they should report the incident. And then, news broke. In a date rape case growing by the minute. Police are calling former NFL star Darren Sharper a serial rapist. Former NFL star Darren Sharper accused of raping and drugging multiple women. And that's where he currently faces charges in Los Angeles. Also in that police report, it says the victims were under the influence of an unknown substance and woke up to find a nude Darren Sharper on top of them. And Sharper faces two counts of aggravated in Los Angeles where he's being held in jail. Nunez, Darren Sharper, and former St. Bernard Parish Sheriff's Deputy Brandon Lucharty were all indicted in December and charged with rape and other crimes. Paint a picture of drug-aided sexual misconduct. That's where he faces charges in two cases. After a crime spree that lasted nearly three years, Darren Sharper was finally arrested. On suspicion of and was suspended from the NFL network, being linked to two sexual assaults. A number that was to rapidly increase in the coming months. On February 14th, 2014, Sharper was officially charged with two counts of by use of drugs, four counts of furnishing a controlled substance, and one count of possession of a controlled substance. All felonies according to the Los Angeles County prosecutors. Sharper pleaded not guilty to all charges. Sharper surrendered his passport. The bail was raised from $200,000 to $1 million. The judge also ordered Sharper not to frequent clubs, bars, or any venue where alcohol is the primary item for sale. Korn also ordered Sharper not to be alone with any women he does not have a previous relationship with from or prior to October 30th, 2013, the date of the first alleged rape in Los Angeles County. Sharper faced up to 30 years in prison if convicted on all counts. And soon, Sharper's house of cards would come crashing down cases involving nine women across four states, who at one point supported women's causes, but later went on to attack women all over the country. Authorities say Sharper sexually assaulted or attempted to assault at least nine women in four states over five months after rendering some of them unconscious. Darren Sharper, Eric Nunez, and Brandon Lucharty all face a litany of drug and sexual assault charges in courts across the city. The attacks starting in New Orleans, then California, Arizona, and finally Nevada. He's also accused of f***ing two women in California and detectives are building more cases against him in Nevada and Louisiana. For drugging and f***ing as many as 16 women in several cities, including right here in Las Vegas. The former NFL star Darren Sharper pleading guilty to sexual assault charges after being accused of drugging and assaulting women in four states. Sharper appearing to, agreeing I should say, to multiple plea deals, nine years behind bars. How do you plead to the charge? Guilty. Sharper was sentenced to nine years in prison, which spurred much public outcry. But the even bigger question atop everyone's mind was, how was Darren Sharper able to avoid arrest for nearly three years, even amidst a police investigation? From day one, the investigation into the allegations levied against Darren Sharper were marred with police failure and celebrity privilege. In the first allegation levied against Sharper, 
Officer Alejandro Fernandez made no effort to contact Sharper, nor are there signs that he attempted to collect evidence from Sharper's apartment. He never referred the case to Miami Beach's Criminal Investigations Unit for further investigation. He never contacted prosecutors to determine whether probable cause existed. There's no sign that Fernandez sent the women's rape kits to a lab for a more detailed examination. Five days after the incident, he closed the case. It was not labeled a crime, and it sits in Miami Beach records as a miscellaneous incident. The police seemingly had Sharper cornered. He got a warrant to collect a sample of Sharper's DNA. It matched a swab taken from the woman's body. Witnesses told of seeing Sharper with the intoxicated woman at a club and later at his condo. Video footage confirmed Sharper and the woman had been seen together, but prosecutors were hesitant to make a move. This was a heater, police shorthand for a high profile case. Prosecutors were hesitant to make a move too quickly on a local football hero with deep pockets and savvy lawyers, according to two individuals with knowledge of the investigation. They held off on an arrest warrant. The DA's position and the administration's position was, because this was a high profile case, we want to make sure we do this the right way. It was mainly because of the celebrityness, the official said. You can't go in there half cocked, hoping you can scare them into pleading guilty or something. You only get one bite at the apple. Investigations into the allegations made against Sharper on October 30th would take nearly two weeks to get started. The detective in charge of the investigation did not attempt to interview Sharper, nor did he obtain a sample of his DNA, and the investigation soon died out. After the November 20th incident, police did a good job of quickly responding to the allegations and gathering quite a bit of evidence against Sharper, a broken pink pill, and a drink that Sharper had mixed and given to the women. The kits had returned from the lab. The examiner's diagnosis was as follows. Sexual assault by history, minor physical injuries by exam, crime lab results pending. Results did not conflict with the victim's statements, nor did they seal a conviction. They got clothing and DNA samples from the women. They interviewed the boyfriend who had received the call during the alleged rape and planned a phone call with one of the victims and Sharper in which Sharper apologized but did not make it clear as to what he was apologizing about. However, even with all the evidence, police would yet again fail to make an arrest. And evidence, such as the pill found in the room and samples from the drink mixed by Sharper, would sit untested in a police storage locker. Sharper's arrest would finally occur after raping four women in the span of 24 hours. As we first reported earlier this week, Sharper was forced to strike a new plea deal with prosecutors after federal judge Jane Trish Malazzo rejected his original deal. She said the nine-year prison sentence was not long enough and indicated that a pre-sentence investigation performed by federal probation and parole listed as many as 14 victims across five states more than the original nine. In 2016, Sharper was sentenced to 18 years in federal prison. In Sharper's final statement to the court, I would like to apologize a thousand times, Sharper said. He looked at the floor as he said, I'm still trying to figure out why I made some of these choices. I lived my life right for 38 years, then I took this path. In the same year, Sharper became eligible for the NFL Hall of Fame leading to a widespread debate on whether his criminal conviction should disqualify him. Ultimately, he was not, with officials stating that Sharper must be considered because voters are prohibited from taking off-field issues into account. One of the greatest downfalls in NFL history, the fall. How do you plead the charge? Of Darren Sharper. <laughs> 